What is up guys, it's your boy Rick Kakis and today we have the guide for how to beat the Fallen Saber Grandmaster Nightfall as fast and easily as possible within Season of the Deep, showcasing some incredible loadouts for all three different classes as well as a bunch of tips for the strike itself. Now importantly, this is the first week the reprised loaded question Nightfall Fusion Rifle is dropping and this can get the incredible brand new Fusion Rifle perk controlled burst, so definitely something you should consider farming. Now let's move on to those recommended loadouts. Firstly, the modifiers you need to know about are number one, it is going to be Arc Threat. After that, the champions are going to be Overload and Barrier. Now the Surges are going to be Arc and Strand. And then lastly, we do have Overcharged Fusion Rifles. Now, starting things off with my Titan, I am running the incredibly powerful Arc Grenadier build available this season. So, Thunder Crash for the Super, Towering Barricade, Seismic Strike, importantly Pulse Grenades, then we've got Touch of Thunder and Knockout as our aspects, and then Spark of Recharge, Spark of Shock, Spark of Ions, and Spark of Magnitude as our fragments. The featured exotic armor piece is the Armamentarium. If one Pulse Grenade is cracked, two is even better. Now, as for the weaponry, first of all, a great auto rifle here, the Refuse's Fury, importantly it does have Demolitionist for more grenade energy and Strand to get that Strand Surge. Moving on from there, we're actually using the Cold Heart. A bit of a doohickey here, however, since we're finally facing Overload Champions, we can take advantage of Overload Trace Rifles within the Seasonal Artifact. And if I want to use a good Arc Trace Rifle, I mean the Cold Heart is exactly that. It's going to ramp up its damage and it actually is capable of killing enemies pretty fast even on Grandmasters, and it'll spawn Ionic Traces which synergize with my build massively. And guys, remember that exotic trace rifles also get that plus 40% increased damage to red bars that exotic primaries do. However, if you want to use your exotic weapon elsewhere, I will mention a great alternative is the Path of Least Resistance. This is another arc trace rifle. It's craftable, it can get volt shot, a really good option. Now moving on from there, my heavy is the Hothead. Of course, an arc rocket launcher, arguably the best one in the game. Moving on from there guys, uh, the Armor mods are going to be firstly Arc Siphon, Font of Wisdom, and Heavy Ammo Finder. After that, we have Firepower and Grenade Kickstart on the arms. Then, importantly, we do have Concussive Dampener and two Harmonic Resistances to combat that insane incoming arc damage. Moving on from there, for the legs, we have Elemental Charge, which again really benefits from the Cold Heart making Ionic Traces, and also we have two Arc Weapon Surges. After that, guys, we have Distribution, we have Time Dilation, and we have a Bomber. But moving on from there to the Warlock, we have another very interesting build. So we are running a Dawnblade with Well of Radiance here, a Healing Rift, Celestial Fire, Healing Grenades even. The aspects are going to be Heat Rises and then Touch of Flame. The fragments are going to be uh, Ember of Singeing, Ember of Torches, Ember of Solace, and Ember of Benevolence. Now, after that, the featured exotic is actually the brand new Cenotaph Mask. Now, this is actually going to make trace rifles automatically reload their uh, rounds from reserves, and it's going to mark more powerful enemies with your trace rifle, and killing them will provide heavy ammo for your team. Now, importantly, it says that you have to have a matching element of trace rifle. This is not true. And additionally, it's actually going to create special ammo for you the user so you have a ton of trace rifle ammo just continuously using your trace rifle and so we're using the navigator again you don't have to match elements here so the navigator being strand taking advantage of that strand surge and also providing woven mail for more protection for your team is incredible and guys throughout this entire nightfall holy crap did we have a lot of heavy dropping so again a great way to take advantage of the fact that you can use your trace rifles to deal with those overload champions. Of course, if you don't have the navigator, you can use any other trace rifle and it will work with this exotic. 
Now, the other weaponry we're using is going to be uh, the Amet AR2. This is a craftable auto rifle, again, to deal with the barrier champions. And this one can just get access to incandescent. It's a totally fine weapon. And then after that, we have yet another hothead. Now, moving on to the armor mods. Firstly, we have Harmonic Siphon, and then Heavy Ammo Scout, and Heavy Ammo Finder. After that, we have Focusing Strike, we have Harmonic Loader, and Impact Induction. After that, we have Void Resistance, Solar Resistance, and Arc Resistance. So the Trifecta, again, I would recommend more focusing on Arc. After that, we do have Arc Scavenger, Arc Weapon Surge, and Recuperation. And then lastly, we have Powerful Attraction. Then we have Font of Restoration. And lastly, a Time Dilation. Now, moving on from there, last but certainly not least, we have the Hunter, and we are running the Night Stalker subclass. So, the Deadfall Super, uh, Marksman's Dodge, Snare Bomb, and Vortex Grenade. Now, the aspects are going to be Stylish Executioner, combined with Vanishing Step for Invisibility. The fragments are Echo of Undermining, Echo of Obscurity, Echo of Starvation, and Echo of Persistence. Now, importantly, the Featured Exotic is the Gear Falcon. This thing is cracked. I mean, I made a whole Gear Falcon build video the second this thing got a buff, and oh my goodness, this is probably the easiest way to get constant volatile rounds and invisibility by simply dodging, going invisible, breaking that invisibility by shooting and getting volatile rounds. Now, what are we putting volatile rounds on? Well, that's actually going to be uh, the gnawing hunger. So this is just a great void weapon. A lot of people have access to this, and this is, again, going to deal with those barrier champions. Now, to pair with that, we actually have a Riptide. So this is just a very powerful fusion rifle for PvE, but importantly, remember, Chill Clip is actually going to deal with those overload champions because slow can and stun overload champions. Now, moving on from there, we do have the Galahorn as the exotic. So the other two of us are using hotheads. The third person should be using a Galahorn to massively boost uh, that rocket launcher damage, especially with how much heavy we're getting thanks to the Cenotaph Mask. Now, moving on from there, the armor mods are going to be firstly Heavy Ammo Scout, Ashes to Assets, and Void Siphon. Then we have Void Loader, Impact Induction, and Firepower. We have Harmonic Resistance, Concussive Dampener, and Arc Resistance. We have Insulation, Innervation, and Solar Scavenger. And lastly, we have Reaper, combined with Powerful Attraction, and Bomber. All right, so moving on from there to the tips for the strike itself, the first thing you need to do is hold out on this Warsat for an extended period of time when tons of enemies are spawning. The most important thing to know here is that the longer you transmat this Warsat, the more the number goes up, the more waves of enemies are going to spawn. But that means that what you can actually do is when you see the first ship coming in, you can simply back off of this objective. And that's going to allow you to completely clear that first wave of enemies and have no more enemies spawn until you are ready to hop back into the Warsat and continue the objective enough for another wave to spawn. So like don't stay in the Warsat past around 30 before getting out because you're going to have tons of ships coming in if you just stay in here. Now speaking of the ships, whenever you see a ship, you're going to want to do what you see us do. Everyone focus fire on those turrets. You want to blow those up as quickly as possible because if you don't, they will absolutely eviscerate you. The good news is once you're on top of those things, oh my goodness, one single pulse grenade where all the enemies are dropping will kill pretty much everything. And actually, you do want to kind of focus fire where the enemies are dropping out of those ships. Even if you're using your rock launchers, remember, you're going to get your heavy back pretty easily with these loadouts. Uh, because if you don't, enemies will go invisible and kind of sneak up around you and can cause some issues. Now, moving on from there, once you're done with that objective, you're going to go underground. And once you enter this base, it is a little bit difficult. This is absolutely where you should be planting a well, as you can see, and just killing as many enemies 
enemies as you can. Try to focus fire, especially the barrier champion at the back of this area, because if you don't, the barrier champion is gonna protect all the enemies back there and that includes a lot of snipers that can ruin your day. Also keep in mind that invisible marauders are going to come up to you. This is just like probably one of the harder parts of this strike, so keep the healing wells and the rifts and stuff going, and then hopefully you can put out enough damage to deal with these enemies. However, don't be afraid to backtrack back through the tunnel if you need a little bit of space between you and the enemies. But moving on, importantly, you're gonna eventually kill all the enemies and then you have to go up to this area here, open up the vent and then blow it up. The important thing is that the second you blow up the vent, as you can see, two overload champions are going to spawn in this hallway. So you want to do exactly what you see our team do. Set it up so that as soon as they spawn, your entire team is there, ready to stun them and then unload your heavy to kill them as quickly as possible. If you don't do this, they're a huge issue. But if you can accomplish that, again, just sit in the well, uh, kill the rest of the enemies. It's really not too bad. In fact, once you kill those champions you can kind of ignore some of the enemies and just hop into the vents and continue on your way. Now with this section here just send one person to go and collect the orb and make it back through the electrified hallway. Just have a couple of teammates sitting here do exactly what you see me do and blow up the exploder shanks before your teammate gets there to make that deposit. Moving on from there, you're just generally going into different areas and killing a lot of enemies and certainly a lot of champions, but then eventually you're gonna get to the boss fight. A word to the wise, when you're jumping down here to the boss fight, really be careful. Like, kind of try to do what you see me do and avoid touching that slanted wall. For whatever reason, if you touch that wall the wrong way, your character will just physics to death and you'll just randomly die there. It's been an issue for years. I don't know why Bungie hasn't fixed it. But once you do get into this boss room, importantly, once you kill all the enemies, the boss is going to spawn. And the boss has some interesting mechanics. So uh, you just want to focus fire this guy down as quickly as possible when he does actually become vulnerable to damage. And then you're gonna have a bunch of shanks spawning off to the sides as well as a barrier champion in the middle of the arena. Once you've dealt with those things, the boss will become available to damage again, you know, melt it down, it's gonna become immune again, but for the second time now, importantly, you're gonna have sniper shanks that spawn kind of out of the top vents on the arena. So definitely keep an eye out for those and try to kill those as quickly as possible. Now, importantly, for the last half of the boss's health, there will not be an immunity phase in between those two quarters. So you can just, as you can see, dump truck the boss and kill him, you know, from half health completely down to zero. And that is exactly the strategy you want to use because uh, you do not want the boss running around. It will chase around and like shock you. So again, you need to be able to focus fire down this boss and melt it with heavies as quickly as possible. And so guys, there you have it. If you do everything efficiently, honestly, this is one of the fastest Grandmasters currently available in the game, especially after Bungie nerfing things like Arms Dealer and Lake of Shadows. You can get your runs down to around 10 minutes, which is insane for how much loot you get at the end. So absolutely guys, I think it's a week worth farming. Guys, hope you enjoyed this video, found this informative, and if you did, please remember to help me out by simply rating and especially sharing this video. If you guys wanna see more Destiny 2 content similar to this, don't be afraid to slap that subscribe button. If you wanna get in touch with me and keep up to date with the latest channel activity, the best way is to follow me on Twitter at Rick Kakis, that is linked in the description down below. Again, I hope you enjoyed the video, and as always, have a good day.